What's up, everybody? Dave Bartosiak here, and I've got another chart of the day. It's a company that just reported after the fell last night. It is the scalar ticker ZS. And, you know, I've seen this pattern a lot lately as I've been digging through charts. Uh, Zscaler is a cloud-based uh, security software. And this is the, the pattern I'm talking about. It's stock rallying sharply and then stalling out giving it up and now we're in this next sort of phase which seems to be more of a consolidation than anything uh and and like i said multiple charts like this where you get a stock that just can't go down um they find support up above that 50 days sometimes they you know kind of flirt with it a little bit up and down but for the most part, the 50-day is really in play. Then when they pop out and they lose their grip on that 50-day, uh, typically they, they find new lows, um, lower lows, series of lower lows. And then they get back to where they were when the, when the party first started, which is fine if you think of this in the grand scheme of things, right? So you got so almost a parabolic move upward, correction, and now you're you're chopping around. So if you think of this off these off these lows of 2023, and you could kind of squint and look at the big picture, you say, oh, well, you know, overall, I guess things are okay, right? But so what happened here? Was this a was this a big miss for the quarter on top line and bottom line? No, it wasn't a miss. It was a beat top line, bottom line. Well, was the guidance for EPS next quarter bad? No, guidance for EPS next quarter was good. Revenue guidance. Revenue guidance was the problem. And when you have something trading at, like, I think this is 61 times earnings. Um, and then you have, so that obviously that's a huge multiple. Um, the sales multiple escapes me right now, but uh, I'm sure it's, well, one. Um, and you have a, a miss. Uh, the guidance like this, the growth isn't there anymore. And but even with this mighty sell-off that we have here in Zscaler, uh, still right at the bottom end of the range that it's been in. So I I guess you could call this lower lower highs because because it is. But since this, this is just a few bucks, a uh, few bucks off, I don't care about it so much. So 208 was the July 15th high. And then we have 202 and change as the August 22nd high. So that's not... I, I, this doesn't look as bad to me as if, you know, like from here to here, right? Um, so there's there's obviously some supply in that 205 area. There's also plenty of support down here, especially if you dip under 160, there have been buyers. And so far, we see today, there are some, some buyers stepping in. You can see the volume last night or yesterday and today. So yesterday ahead of uh, earnings, you had... 4.8 million shares that traded today already after earnings got 4.8 million shares so a little bit a little bit of a bounce off of the lows and it's it's done this before where it bounces at these lows and there there is some support so uh if i'm a long-term z scaler holder i'm really hoping it gets into this gap it continues this move higher of course we're not going to know that until um you know a couple of days from now we're going to we're going to see what really happens these but for now what do you have you know, heading into this report, it could not get past and meaningfully past that 200-day moving average. So was that a little bit of a sign maybe of things to come? I don't know. You've, you've had failures of the 200 before, and this was a, a failed, or really a failed breakout from the 200. just took a while for that failure to develop, uh, but it did. So so heading into this report, you're kind of hoping that maybe a third time's a charm and this thing could, you know, could move. Now, the... The move lower yesterday ahead of this report, while it does feel, it fe doesn't feel great because you did fail at that 200 day, you're still in between the 50 and the 200. So anytime you're in this little range, that's that kind of tells me you're undecided. The stock's bouncing in that range where you're either you're under the 200 and over the 50, or you're over the 200, you're under the 50. That's still sort of a undecided sort of what I, I used to call a lot the, the no man's land, where you're just kind of bouncing around between there. You're not really sure what's what's happening. So 
I'm looking at Zscaler here, um, I like that there's a bit of a bounce here intraday. Okay. So tomorrow I'd be looking at today's levels for sure to see if there's another failure at the highs or if it retests the lows. If it retests the lows and these lows fail, it's look out below. Uh, if it can push through these highs and starts to get in this gap, then now you're going to be drawing fibs off of this gap and seeing where that might go, right? Because there's going to be little areas of resistance on the comeback. So if it gets into the gap and starts coming, these levels, this 169.66 to 173 and change, these levels are going to end up being important to see if the Z-Scaler can really fight through that. And then you got some of the real key levels like the 180s where, you know, time's going to tell. Are we going to see a lot of resistance at that level? Will there be supply? We'll find out. So keep your eye on those as you're moving forward for um, Z-Scaler. And then again, if it takes out those lows, then it could be look out below. All right, folks. Well, that's all I have for you on today's chart of the day. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow the author here on the article side. And check out at Bartosiastics. That's my Twitter handle where we end up posting these a lot too. So I want to say thank you so much for checking us out today. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one.